by grace ye are saved, and have raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Amen. And that not of yourselves, right. Right. it is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That was the first ten verses of the ch second chapter of Ephesians. And this morning, uh, we're going to center around verse number four. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. And for a few moments, I'm going to speak to you from this subject. Simply, but God. But God. Now, has anybody out there, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm sorry. Now, has anybody out there ever had a time, ever been a, in a situation or circumstance that you just don't know how you made it through? All right. All right. Has God ever intervened for you in anything in your life? Yeah. It could be spiritually relationally, financially, it could be on your job, in your household. Has God ever intervened on your behalf and all you could do when you really realize it was sit there and say, but God, but God. Or have you ever been in some real trouble I mean some for real trouble, danger from a car accident, an accident at work, prowling around in the street somewhere that you had no business, doing some things behind one another's back that you know can turn out very bad. But God, but God saved you. Have you ever been so sick? Or so hurt that you wind up in the hospital with a serious condition. And the doctors may have given you the impression that we've done all we can do. Your time may be limited. You may be crippled. You may be paralyzed. You may be out of commission for a long, long time. But God, who is rich in mercy, wherewith his great love, he loved us. And he loves us. And he continues to love us. In spite of ourselves, no matter what we do or how many times we do it. God still loves us. Amen. That is an unmistaken, undeniable, infallible truth of the characteristic of God, our Father, and our Creator. You can't get that confused. Or let me say, we should not 
gets that confused. But oftentimes, as we walk this Christian journey, depending on what's going on in our life at any particular time, we lose focus. We lose our attention span. Things come up and we can forget about how good God is to us. Especially when we get to the point that we think we got it going on. Even in the house of the Lord. In our careers, financially, we don't pray as much. We don't love one another as much. We don't help people. We don't read the word. But God, who is rich in mercy, wherewith his great love, he loved. Let that sink in for a moment. Because oftentimes within the body of believers, we're quick to say things that we've heard or even been taught for years and years, whether in church or at home, uh, like God is good. Always God is good. But do we really know or understand on a deep level what that actually means? We say our God is a good God. Do you know how good God is? Do you know what his goodness entails? Do you understand that from God's goodness emanates every other attribute that he has? First of all, being loved. Now we know that God is our creator. So that makes us the creation. We also know that we're the clay and God is the pot. But more times than not, we want to get on the wheel and shape ourselves. Amen. Now, if, if you'll flip over with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now sit down to verse number 31. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, in the first chapter of Genesis, we know God created the world from nothing. He brought it out of darkness 
into life. And every day we spent in creation, making mountains and the seas and bringing up dry land and, and the animals and insects and everything that's on the earth, he said that it was good. But when it came to man who he created in his own image and his own likeness, at the end of that day, he said it was very good. Very good. So that means a lot to us as God's creation. We are his crowning glory, which again, it comes from the goodness of God. Because he made us, he has taken care of us, he has kept us, he has provided for us, and he has been with us and in us every second of every day of every month and year since we have been born to this life. And throughout our lives, all the situations and circumstances, all the good times, all the tough times, all the hard times, he's been there. Whether we accepted him and acknowledged him or not. But God, if it wasn't for God, where would we be? What could we do? The God that loved us and loved us so much, the God that created us, the God that sent his son Jesus to earth, born of a virgin, to live among us, to teach and preach, and great miracles, and, and do such wonderful things, who died on the cross, was beaten all night long, never said a mumbling word, nailed to a cross, hung high, shed his blood, and died. And on the third day, arose again with all power, all authority, all dominion in his hand. But God, while Jesus was here, he often stated that he does what his father tells him to do. He does the works of his father. What about us? Can we say that? How many of us, when you were young, coming up, didn't completely obey nobody? Come on now, I wish I had somebody here. I wish I had today, there's more than two of us. I know two myself. But see, and then when we talk about our Christian walk, amen, amen, amen. how many of us can say that we obey our heavenly Father? Ooh, real smart. Because see, we we will share, we will proclaim about our walk with God. We will show people the picture of what a good Christian we are. We will agree with people. We'll say, oh, we read the Bible every day and meditate, not fast two times a week. I give to the poor. Right? But what about all the other stuff 
that our Heavenly Father asked us to do that is contained in his instruction book, the Bible. See, a lot of stuff is going on in this world today. We're already complaining about the high gas prices and food going up and inflation and car prices, house prices, you name it, all the prices are going up. While it seems like our paychecks are getting smaller. But yet, our Father knows everything that we need. And as He has promised in His Word, He will provide all of our needs according to His riches in heaven. God always keeps his word. And so now, based on what we're dealing with in a decaying world, and how we're reacting and, and, and dealing with that, each individually and collectively, okay, we have to be sure of where we stand. We have to be sure of what we're showing people. We have to make sure that our call and our election is secure. But God, but God, who is rich in mercy, rich in mercy, but that means he's rich in everything else. Amen. In everything he has, and everything he is, he gave it unto us. Amen. So we have the same characteristics, we have the same abilities that God gave us when he created us in his image and his likeness. Amen. But God, uh, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. See, we, we, we have to internalize it. We have to secure that in our being at a gut level so that we can begin to walk as circumspectly as we make out that we do. Because see, people in this decaying world, they can spot a has-been, they can spot a phony, they can spot your game, they can spot your pretense, fast working in a hurry. Now see, what we Christians have to be on guard now is about drawing others to Christ through the light of God, through the relationship that we have with Christ. Drawing them out of darkness into the light. More than we running them away. More than we pushing them out. More than we're making them feel unwelcome in the house of God. Right. See, we do that sometimes in the house of God. And, and think about it. We know one another. Yeah. We know one another. And there's times that we can come to church and we will make each other so uncomfortable that might not have seen them for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Or people have their jaws all tightened up. You can see it in our faces. We can see it in our actions. Won't speak, won't say hello, avoid one another. But God, right. 
who is rich in mercy. He bestows his mercy on us, which is renewed daily. Amen. And can't we be merciful to one another? Amen. Amen. Can't we learn to be more like God? Not in a superficial way, but in a compassionate, loving, kind way. Because God is our Heavenly Father. God is our Creator. And see, a lot of things tie in with, with, with God uh, uh, being rich in mercy. What about faith? In Hebrews uh, 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Amen. What about without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Those that come to him must believe that he is. Right? Do we really believe the stuff we have learned, the things that we say, and the ways that we act? What do we really believe inside of us? If we believe so much in God, then why do we treat one another so badly? Why are we so unconcerned about our fellow man or those that we seem to think are better or less better than ourselves? And what about those that are truly less fortunate than us? If we compare our lives to some people outside of these walls, we should be on our knees begging for forgiveness from God and thanking Him for everything that He has done for us. Amen. Giving Him praise and giving Him worship. When you come in these doors to the house of prayer, nobody should have to ask you to stand up and give God some praise. If anything, we should be able to tell you to sit down. And let service go on because there is a word from God. But see, praise and worship is contagious. When true praise and true worship is going on, it's just going to start over here and, and fill over that row and that row back there, then this side, and then it's going to ease on over here, the next thing you know, the whole house is praising God. The whole house is worshiping God. And that's only because of a God that loves us so much. See, we not only have all the characteristics and this stuff uh, that our Father and Creator God has, See, we have to understand and realize that we also have his son. Amen. We also have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everything that God is. Yes. Because as it's described, these three are one. These three are one. So again, everything that the Father, our Creator, has, He gave it up to us. We have the power through Jesus Christ and God to change our lives. We have the authority and dominion over the things on the earth and in the earth to change some of the stuff going on around us. We have the power and ability 
based on the word of God that we read and come to understand that it says resist the devil and he will free. I haven't read anywhere where it says run from the devil and you'll get away. It says resist the devil. Because the devil is working overtime. Now. And we that are children of God and believers, we have to understand and accept the fact that Satan is after us. He don't have to go that hard after people he already got or people that are on the fence. And it's us that adds to the numbers. See, we got to understand, and God tells us in his work, we have to beware. Because just because you've been saved 55 years or one day, Satan can still use you. If you are not solid in your Christian walk. And I don't know anybody that is actually that solid in this Christian walk 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year perpetually. That's real. And the question is, if you want evidence, ask yourself. It's not only what you do, it's what you think. It's what's in your heart. You don't have to say a word out your mouth to be disobedient to God. When you go in the grocery store or Sam's Club or something, and you see those people with the sign that say homeless, help me. And God puts it on your heart to roll down your window, give them a dollar or two or whatever, go buy them a meal or whatever. But you say, I'm not going to be bothered. They don't have a corner. And you keep going. What God specifically told you to do one. And I'm not going to waste my money with this one because he ain't going to do nothing but go get some beer or wine or some drugs or something. Amen. God didn't ask you to discern all of that. He said, yeah. Because like we can discern one another, God can discern us. Amen. Because he's the creator, yeah. not us. So we can't tell or dictate to God what to do with us. How to shape us, how to mold us, how to teach us. How to discipline us. How to bless us. We can't do that. The children of God we get upset when somebody else gets blessed. We get upset when something good happens to them. Like the old folks used to say, you focus on the wrong thing. All of us should be focused primarily, primarily on God. At all times. Now understand this. I'm not just talking at you. I'm including myself in this whole thing. Because I'm still walking. I'm still learning. I'm still discovering. God is still revealing stuff about me to me. And it's a journey. It's a process. But God, who is rich in mercy, I can only imagine if, if I was still living like I used to, what kind of fool would I be now? 
an old fool. A fool that's been out here acting a fool way too long. Miserable, depressed. But even in those conditions, but God who is rich in mercy, his great love, wherewith he loved her. And see, to take a step further, understanding that God loves me. God loves you. God has enough love to love each and every person that he created simultaneously and at the same time. Pay attention to all their needs, all their requests, all their desires, and sort them out We already know he's all-powerful, all-knowing, and he's everywhere at the same time. Because see, God, who is rich in mercy, he responds to our every need. You can prove your pain to him, and God responds to your pain. You might give you enough sense to go take a title off and sit some, you know, behind someone where and not try to walk to the bathroom from the bed without any shoes on your feet in the middle of the night. But he responds to your every need. Gas prices and all this stuff going on. We just, we just can't go off the road. We saw a sign, regular on leg was six dollars. Eagle was a dollar more. Went out to eat a couple of times and got the check. And I'm like, ooh. But I thank God for his provision and his mercy that he has provided enough to take care of all our needs. To take care of everything. God can handle our finances better than we can. And see, we get to the place of, just like we're talking about faith, another component is trust. We will easily say that we trust the Lord. How can we say we trust the Lord and not do what he says to do? Mm. Even in church. He asked for 10% of our income. Sometimes we can't do that. Pastor has taught us over the years that you can give your way out of financial trouble. I believe that. We were never so blessed until me and my family, we put God first with our gift. And still offered up our time, talent, and even more treasure if it was, if it was needed. See, we also have the glory of God in our lives, within us. We say glory to God and all this kind of, do we know what God's glory is? Right? Remember the story back in Exodus uh, when it God is bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt, and Moses was leading them uh, around the prop, around in the wilderness. And it came a time that Moses went up the backside of the mountain to meet with God. And remember the time Moses asked God, he said, let me see your glory. 
And God told him, I can't show you my face. Because you'll die. So he said, hide yourself in the cleft of this rock. And as I pass by, I'll show you my goodness. God's glory is his goodness. Everything comes from God's goodness. At that time when Moses came back down from the mountain, the children of Israel noticed the change in him. His hair was white and shiny, his face shone. It was brilliant, it was bright. They saw the difference. Because when you meet God and get into the presence of God, something is going to affect and change us. And when we experience that kind of change, in the presence of God, then our main desire will become staying in the presence of God as much as we can. God also renews our lives. Everything that is broken, everything that is lost, Emotionally, mentally, spiritually, uh, physically, object-wise, jobs, relationships, marriages, you name it, God will use it. He'll take out the worn out or the broken or the messed up parts of what's going on in your life and he will replace it with brand new parts, people, pleasure, and peace. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. He renews our enthusiasm and our love for Him. When we, as it says in Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who will call by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. Then will I hear and heal their land. There's nothing that God, Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit can do. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing that they can't do. There's nothing uh, that they can't overcome. There's nothing that they can't bring us through. And there's nothing that can stop us where when we're in intimate relationship with God through the finished works of Jesus Christ. We have that. Way back in Genesis, He gave us dominion and authority over everything. On the earth and in the earth. We still here. We still here. Think about it. A global pandemic. And then the United States itself wiped out pretty near a million people. We still here. That's one of those but God moments. By whatever means, we still get our paychecks or get our money so that we can pay our bills and take care of our needs. Right? Because see, that's part of the way God provides for us. We're not suffering. 
in those areas. Health-wise, we got our aches and pains and our this and that. But look around. Today, this day, we're in the house of the Lord. No matter what, we made our way to the house of the Lord today. Okay? So we got that God responds, He renews, and He restores. Restoration is different than renewal. Renewal is fixing something up or making it over. Restoration is more like when you think of people, right, and them being restored. With a human being, restoration is like a new beginning. A new feeling, new grace, new mercy, new gifts from God, dragging you out of the muck and mire, out of the darkness that sometimes we wind up in of our own doing, and sometimes it's not of our own doing. See, so think about, we have a tendency as we get older, we more focus on ourselves. Think about the children and all the babies that are in situations and positions that they don't have any control of. They have nothing to do with. They're in stuff and actually they're dealing with the consequences of adult behavior. And God can take those children protect them, educate them through their years of growing in whatever setting they wind up in, keep them there till they're adults and, and put them together holy and well adjusted. Isn't that? But God that's the glory of God. That's the goodness of God. You see, when you think about it, you see and you witness some wondrous things in this world, you can't help but give God the glory. Give Him the praise and give Him the, the worship. You see, we get bogged down with all of this terrible news all the time. And see, so that's the mess that we want to come and share with everybody we run into. We want to share the bad, terrible news, what's going on in the world today. Right? But look around, ain't none of us going to protest nothing. Right? It's a big enough chore to get to the voting uh, place and vote. We all know how important those things are. And we also know how important it is to live and walk according to God's word, especially in his house and amongst his people. We know this. But God, because he's merciful, and his great love that he has for us, he still gives us another chance All right. repeatedly to correct that in our lives. Because one day we're going to have to stand before the throne and answer for what we did and what we didn't do. So it's, it's, it's no mystery how we're connected to God. It's not really all that complicated to figure out. 
If you know to do right, do right. And when we choose to do wrong, you got to understand that's an intentional choice. And I'm talking about especially for a Christian. We know when we get attitudes with people. We know when we get to the point we don't want to be around certain people. We know this. We know when we don't want to forgive each other for the slightest indiscretion. We know. But God who is rich in mercy and his great love wherewith he loved us. I wish and I wonder about the time that we all come unto the unity of faith. I wonder what that would really look like. I wonder how much of God's work that we could really get done. I wonder how loving we could be with one another, glad to see one another. I wonder what it would look like that when anybody has an issue or a problem, we band together first to pray to the provide and be there for that person. I wonder how many of these seats would fill up if what we projected outside of this house of prayer would be received in spirit and in truth by the loss and the suffering of the world. I wonder how our children would grow up in that type of positive spiritual environment. I wonder what it would be like to grow in grace as our older members, including myself, age and go through things, get to the point that we need help. I wonder what it would look like for a bunch of young men from the church I serve when I can no longer cut grass around my house and see several of the young men come out there and take care of it for me. I wonder what Tallahassee would begin to look like if we began to just do our part trying to be just a little bit better. I wonder what Florida would become if word got out and we got a bunch of believers in Tallahassee that are doing what they would call radical things. And it's just following the will of God. I wonder. I wonder. Because I know the Bible says we can do all things through Christ Jesus our Lord. All that. With Christ, we can't fail. I wonder when we go to our children's graduation, and many of them are on the honor roll, the dean's list in college, wearing them different colors, uh, what do you call those things? 
Yeah, yeah whatever. Cool. You know what I'm talking about? Those different colored sashes that go around their stuff. I wonder when we have masters and PhDs among this body of believers. I wonder. I wonder how much better it could be when we bless the Lord on our soul and forget not his benefits. I wonder just to get started, just to believe and trust God enough because of his great mercy, his great love, his great support. I wonder. I wonder. It, it, it's something to wonder. But I believe that it can happen. I believe that God can do anything. I believe that God is a good God. I believe that everything is going to be all right with him. I believe if we just hold on tight to God's unchanging hand. I believe that if we love each other just a little bit more. I believe that if we uh, help each other just a little bit more. I believe uh, that we can do it with the Lord in our hearts. I believe that God is able. I believe that we're able. I believe that it's going to come true. I believe that our faith shall be increased. I believe that we will begin to trust God more. I believe that our children are going to come up just fine. I believe that God's got his hands on every person in here. I believe that his mercy and his grace will never fail us. I believe that health and prosperity is in God's will for each and every one of us. I believe Oh Lord, that you are the true and only God. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he came to earth, was born of a virgin. I believe that he picked 12 disciples and went about healing and doing miracles all throughout the land. I believe that he was betrayed one night by one of his own disciples. I believe that they came and arrested him and they beat him all night long. I believe that they sentenced him to death on a hill called Golgotha. I believe that they made him carry his own cross up that hill. I believe that they nailed him to that cross. I believe that they hung him high and stressed him wide. I believe that he gave up the ghost and hung his head and he died for you and you and you. I believe that they buried him in a borrowed tomb. I believe that he spent one day, one night. I believe that he spent two days, two nights. I believe he went down and defeated hell and took the keys from Satan himself. But I believe on that third day, he got up. He got up with all power in his hands. I believe that he went back 
the sin at the right hand of the Father to continue to make intercession for us. I believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and through Him we can do all things. I believe. I believe. Oh, uh, yeah. I believe. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is the God who is, was, is, and is to come. He is Mary's baby. He is God's favorite son. He is our Lord of Lord and King of Kings. He is the lily in the valley. He is the bright and the morning star. He is the peace in the midst of a storm. He is the man who walked on water, the man from uh, Galilee. He is the one who healed the sick and raised the dead. He is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and put your hands together. Stand in the feet of your God and praise. Not the pity that praise it. Let's praise God on him. And we have done something great in our lives. Thank you. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him praise. Come on. As we go forth to partake in this sacred supper, first of us pray. Eternal God our Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your presence here with us. We thank you for worshiping you from our hearts. We thank you for your goodness and your great love towards us. And as we prepare our minds and our hearts for this communion supper, your supper, Lord, let us clear and cleanse anything unworthy of us right here, right now. Let us pray for forgiveness of our sins and cleansing from all our iniquities. Help us, Lord, to make sure that we're reconciled to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord. Help us to be worthy. Help us to love you because you first loved us. And throughout taking of this supper, let us keep in mind our heart and our desire to be closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The 
day that Jesus Christ was betrayed by one of his disciples, he sent two of his disciples into the town and told them to look for or search for a man carrying a pitcher of water oh, yeah. and to follow him. And when he goes into a building, you approach him and say, the master has need of this room for his supper tonight. And the man complies. He shows them a place with an upper room completely furnished, completely supplied. So later on that evening, Jesus and the disciples gathered there to partake of the Lord's Supper. Jesus told the disciples that one of them was going to betray him. They all asked, is it I? Even the one called G Judas asked Jesus, was it I? And Jesus told him, so you say. But during that supper, Jesus took the bread and break it. And passed it out. And told the disciples that this is my broken body. As often as you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. And likewise, he took a cup of wine, blessed it, and told his disciples, this represents my blood. As often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. And after it, afterwards, the Bible says that they sang a hymn and they went out. No one knows what was sung, but I'm sure there's something about the blood. I know it was the blood.
and now has received benediction. Now may the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide on you until we meet again. And let the whole church say amen. 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 One more time. Amen. Greet somebody with love and continue to give God the praise throughout this week.